Welcome, welcome everybody. I am the air quotes comedian, a man who is to driving what Harrison Ford is to flying, and this is the Polemics Podcast. Welcome. I thought I'd do a routine that was more like what people expect comedians to do. According to crack.com, hack comedians complain about bad drivers, which is funny because I'm a bad driver who occasionally complains about hack comedians. And I am a hack comedian. I watched that movie The Purge the other day. If you're unfamiliar with it, then I'll save you the trouble of having to watch it. Basically, it concerns an alternate reality where once a year, everything becomes legal and hilarity ensues. Not, as I thought, a film about vomiting. Though, oddly enough, if I was to review the movie in one word... It is high concept, sure, perhaps even a good premise for a movie, but really poorly executed. And no, this podcast didn't suddenly become a channel where I review movies, I just needed to set things up for what's coming next. So, The Purge then. Where once a year you can do anything you want without consequences. Murder, rape, robbery, leaving the toilet seat up. Of course, this is just an everyday thing for the politicians, billionaires and multinational corporations that inhabit our world as they destroy it. Oh, little bit of politics. I do think the purge is a good idea, but perhaps a little extreme. We should have the purge. However, let's dial it back just a little bit. I reckon the purge should be implemented, but only on the roads and for the vehicles on them. The traffic purge, because let's face it, that's a purge that would be most beneficial to society. It would be great, imagine it, no speed limit, so you could barrel along at 70 miles an hour in a school zone without fear of being pulled over by the traffic pigs. You wouldn't have to worry about stop signs, traffic lights, or the blue and red lights of traffic pigs. You could drive the wrong way up a one-way street. You could mow down any errant pedestrian or people on bicycles. Indeed, it would be a fun day out for all the family. Now, I'm the sort of person who brings a nuclear missile to a knife fight and thus, for the traffic purge, I wouldn't be content to drive anything less than a fully functioning tank. Hello, John. Got a new motor? Yes, Alexi. It's a fully functioning Sherman tank. I would expect other people participating in the traffic purge to have the same idea, which means the traffic purge has already devolved into a day-long civil war. Yeah, I don't think that bit was funny, really. It was a good idea, but, you know, poorly executed. Today in Sing Song Penitentiary, multiple murderer Jimmy McMurdery Murderface was poorly executed. I do like driving though, but at least I have the common decency to feel guilty about it because it's bad for the environment. The only thing I don't like about driving is all the other drivers on the road, bunch of rubber-necking tossers who constantly get in my way. The car horn isn't sufficiently articulate to effectively communicate my feelings. I'd like a car horn that had options. Option A, a standard meep meep to inform fellow drivers that yes, in fact, I am there on the road. Option B, police siren chirrup to inform a fellow driver that they should get the fuck out of my way. Option C, the horn yells, fuck you, you cunt, to inform a fellow driver to fuck right off for being such an egregious cunt. Option D, because fuck the rule of threes. Option D, machine gun headlights with armour piercing rounds. And we're right back to the traffic purge. When they are asked, most people rate their driving as being above average, which is probably because most people are fucking idiots who have no grasp of objective reality. Yeah, not me, I am a terrible driver. A four-way stop sign situation at a crossroads. If nobody's stopped there, then there is no fucking spoon. Know what I mean? Traffic lights to me are more of a suggestion than an actual instruction. I am an awful driver. I routinely get stopped and ticketed by traffic pigs, but somehow manage to space my traffic faux pas far enough apart that I don't get permanently banned from driving. In the USA, your ticket is generally expunged if you stay on the straight and narrow for six months, or, as I like to call it, being hyper-vigilant for traffic pigs for half a year. 
it's kind of cool that the law will forget that you're a danger to the public and yourself while on the road. Not so much with the insurance companies, though. Those fuckers have got a memory like a girlfriend or a wife. Shit, that was really sexist. Sorry about that. Let's have another crack at it. Those insurance companies have got a memory like an elephant. If your significant other happens to look like an elephant, I'm not having a dig. I mean, look at me, for instance. I'm a dead ringer for John Merrick. As he looks now. I am the worst driver, though. I don't know if you've ever survived a high-speed collision. My first major accident, I was tailgating a car on the highway, going about 65 miles an hour, and the car I was tailgating overtook the car in front of them, which was stationary. I didn't have time to hit the brakes. Boom! Airbags deployed, seatbelt contusion, the whole nine, you know. I will say this about it, it was very life-affirming. J.G. Ballard was right. I was sexually aroused. By the time I clambered out of my wrecked vehicle, I was hard as a rock and ready to fuck. Then I saw the couple I had ploughed into and realised, them being old and ugly, that I definitely didn't want to fuck them. More than I had already. I had learned a valuable lesson, though. I hadn't really, because I did the same thing a month later. I'm always having scrapes, prangs and bumps. I do crazy stuff when I'm driving. Idiotic things. Driving down the highway at 75 miles an hour and the services are few and far between and I'm absolutely dying for a piss. I don't know if you've ever tried to go to the bathroom while driving, but it's quite a precarious and complex affair. You have to get your trousers and underwear pulled down, move the seat back and up and tilt it forward. Then you have to get your knob, or nub in my case, into a bottle and try to relax enough to actually go. It's fine when cars are overtaking you, but big rigs are a different matter. Fortunately, the driver of a semi wouldn't really be able to see what you're up to because of where they sit in the United States. But if they had a passenger, they would be in a prime position to get an eyeful. If that happened, I'd just look them dead in the eye and mouth the words, You think this is impressive? You should check me out when I'm taking a shit. Oh fuck, there's no toilet paper in my car. Crazy, crazy stuff. When I first moved to America, right, I chanced upon Elm Street in this small town. I thought to myself, oh, this is so fucking cool. I wonder if Freddy Krueger will fillet me like a fish when I fall asleep. No, is the answer to that, because I'm a crusty old man and not a pubescent teenager. Not to mention, he's not real. But it was cool, right, until I visited myriad towns in the USA and discovered... Every one of those fuckers has an Elm Street, a Washington Avenue, a Main Street. Welcome to Cookie Cutter America. Cookie Cutter fucking towns in the USA, but on the plus side, all arranged on a grid system, making it hard to get lost. Take that Europe with your complete lack of town planning, you nearsighted cunts. Another good thing about the US road system is that generally speaking, all the roads are nice and straight. Now, the Romans did an outstanding job here. That's the end of this episode of The Polemics. Be sure to hit the dislike button as you drive through the establishment and then take a nice long drive off of a very short pier.